Good morning, brethren, sisters, Church of the Living God. Hi. Please get your authorized version of the scriptures and turn in your authorized version of the scriptures to Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12. <clears throat> we will be reading verses 4 on to verse 13 in Romans chapter 12. Please go there. Romans chapter 12, verses 4 on to verse 13. For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office, so we, being many, are one body in Christ. And every one members one of another. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, whether prophecy, let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith. Or ministry, let us wait on our ministering. Or he that teacheth on teaching. Or he that exhorteth on exhortation. He that giveth, let him do it with simplicity. God loveth a cheerful giver, remember. He that ruleth with diligence, he that sheweth mercy with cheerfulness, not begrudgingly, not begrudgingly. Let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil, abhor his extreme hatred. Cleave to that which is good. What is good? There is only one good, and that is God, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. <clears throat> Be kindly affectioned one to another with brotherly love. In honor, preferring one another. Not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, Serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer, distributing to the necessity of saints, given to hospitality, given to hospitality. First Timothy, very quickly, First Timothy, chapter three, one verse. First Timothy, chapter three, verse two. Uh, let's read verses one and two in First Timothy, chapter three. This is a true saying: If a man desire the office of a bishop, he desireth a good work. A bishop then must be blameless, the husband of one wife, vigilant, sober, of good behavior, given to hospitality, apt to teach, given to hospitality. And Titus chapter 1, verses 7 on to verse 9. For a bishop must be blameless as the steward of God, not self-willed, not soon angry, <laughs> not given to wine, no striker, not given to filthy lucre, but a lover of hospitality, a lover of good men, sober, just, holy, temperate, holding fast the faithful word as he hath been taught, that he may be able by sound doctrine both to exhort and to convince the gainsayers. There's that word hospitality again. Hospitality. Go to Philippians. Go to Philippians. Philippians chapter 1. Philippians chapter 1. 
please. Philippians chapter 1, we will be reading verses 1 on to verse 11 in Philippians chapter 1. Paul and Timotheus, the servants of Jesus Christ to all the saints in Christ Jesus which are at Philippi, with the bishops and deacons, grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine for you all making request with joy. Is it a joy unto you to pray for other people? To pray that our Lord give unto the needs of your fellow brethren, the saints? Hmm? Is it a joy for you to pray for others? Or do you do it because you know you got to? Know how it says that God loveth a cheerful giver? See, right away we always think about what? This, don't we? Don't we? Yeah, we do. Yeah, we do. It's a little bit deeper than that. And I've said that to you many times before. <clears throat> Is it a joy for you to pray for your brothers and sisters? For your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now, being confidence, confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Even as it is meet for me to think this of you all, because I have you in my heart, and as much as both in my bonds and in defense and confirmation of the gospel, Ye all are partakers of my grace. For God is my record, how greatly I long after you all in the bowels of Jesus Christ. And this I pray, that your love may abound yet more and more in knowledge and in all judgment, that ye may approve things that are excellent, that ye may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ being filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ, unto the glory and praise of God. Unto the glory and praise of God. The love that is being talked about is the love between brethren. And the fellowship in verse 5, for your fellowship in the gospel. Fellowship has everything to do with our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. You, the church of the living God, brethren, sisters. You ever opened your door unto a fellow brother, a fellow sister, invited them in, invited them over? Had fellowship through the scriptures? Broke bread. True fellowship. You can have good fellowship here online. Yes, you can. With the actual brethren and sisters, yes. But face-to-face, -face, flesh, it's always something special. Always something special. Are you given to hospitality? Hmm? Go to First Peter. Go to 1 Peter chapter 4. 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 8 on to verse 11. 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 8 on to verse 11. And above all things, have fervent charity, self-sacrifice, among yourselves. For charity shall cover a, the multitude of sins. Use hospitality one to another without grudging. As every man hath received a gift, even so minister the same one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. 
If any man minister, let him do it as of the ability which God giveth, that God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Go back to Philippians now, chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2, verses 1 on to verse 4. If there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship in the Spirit, if any bowels of mercies, fulfill ye my joy that ye be like-minded having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind. Let each esteem other better than themselves. Let each esteem other better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Verse 5. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who himself came not to be served, but to serve. But to serve. First John, first John chapter one, first John chapter one, I think we can handle reading first John chapter one, don't you? <clears throat> that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon and our hands have handled. The capital W, Word of Life. Capital W uh, word appears seven times within the authorized version of the scriptures. It appears only six times within the NIV, by the way. And every time you see the capital W word in the scriptures, then you know the seven times, it's always reference unto our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Isn't that interesting, huh? For the life was manifested, and we have seen it, and bear witness, and shew unto you that eternal life which was with the Father, and was manifest unto us. That which we have seen and heard declare we unto you, that ye also may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father, and with his Son Jesus Christ, being of one mind, And these things write we unto you, that your joy may be full. This then is the message which we have heard of him, and declare unto you, that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him, and walk in darkness, we lie, and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. But if we walk in the light, Verse 7, as he is in the light, 
we have fellowship one with another. This is just going to be a very quick video. Um, my wife and I are going to be having a visitor join us. Uh, today is Thursday the 13th. Um, at some point today, later today, or maybe early uh, in the morning, our dear brother, our friend, is going to be ascending up onto us to uh, stay with us for a couple days. And we, uh, all three of us, my wife and I and uh, our dear brother, I'm talking about our brother, our friend, Alexander Hartley, is going to be coming up here to uh, spend some time with us again. And um, going to be spending the weekend with us. And uh, the last time our brother came and visited us, it was unannounced. And um, it was, oh, it was beautiful. It was so beautiful. The Lord used our brother in so many ways, in so many ways. And um, we, we really learned a good lesson about being instant in season and out of season. Being ready and um, shewing hospitality. And when it comes to those of the church of the living God, especially what's going on right now, brethren, how willing are you to open your doors unto a brother, unto a sister, on the spur of the moment, on a whim, unannounced? How many of you would do that? Hmm? We, are, we are commanded to use hospitality, to show love onto one another of the church of the living God. Open your doors onto your brethren, onto your sisters. You know? How many of you will do that? How many of you are willing to do that? Hmm? It's, a, it's a beautiful and glorious thing when you can have one of your own brethren, your own sisters, come to where you are and you can break bread with them and be in the scriptures together and just be there one with another it's a beautiful thing and you know like i said these days nowadays today what happens if a brother or sister loses all, everything and they come to you and they show up at your doorstep. What would you do? What would you do if a brother or a sister, I, I'm talking about if you, you know, you know what I mean. What if um, they show up unannounced? Would you turn them away? Would you be begrudging that they were there, but knowing that, well, I guess I have to. Some things to think about. Now the context that the verses that we have already looked at have to do with those of the church of the living God. Okay. Unfortunately, nowadays, um, and this is between you and the Lord, it might not be the wisest or safest thing for you to bring a complete stranger into your home. I know that it says in Hebrews about uh, be not negligent to entertain strangers because some have entertained angels unawares. I know that. I know that. I know that. And I, you know, if a stranger does come by, you know, that's between you and the Lord. You pray about it, uh, you know, and you don't close your heart off to such. But uh, you need to, especially nowadays, you know, but nonetheless, 
We are to use hospitality one toward another, to be gracious with our time, to be giving with our time. See, so many, when, they, when, it, when it comes to giving, to charity, so many stop with the money. They think immediately, you immediately think of the money. Thanks, Roman Catholicism, you whore. <laughs> Thanks, Charismatics, a daughter of the whore. Roman Catholicism, the Jesuit order, you know? Yeah, thanks. It is much more deeper than that. I personally believe that it puts a big smile upon our Lord's face when brethren can sit one across another over the scriptures, over a meal. I think it really does put a, a big smile upon his face, especially in these days, when he allows opportunities such as, as such for us to do so. And brethren, you know, I know we're spread out. I know. I know that. I know that in your locality, I don't care where you live. In your locality, how, where are those authorized version of the scripture believers by you who are genuine of the church of the living God, who believe the scriptures, that it's not just a good translation, but that this is the perfect word of God, that are of the church of the living God. How many abide by you in very close proximity to yourself? You might say you got some, praise the Lord. How often do you get together? You know, nowadays, brethren, with what is literally right upon the horizon. If you have the chance to, take it. Do it. I think it will make our Lord happy, especially right now. Right now, when so many, I, I, by the way, I have a video right here to do on um, the issues of family, because <laughs> uh, a brother had made, a, left a comment, um, and, and we're praying for you, okay, brother, we're praying for you, there's an email on the channel here, feel free to contact me, okay, but um, I know that those who call your, themselves your family <laughs> can really be some of the biggest thorns onto us, can't they? Because I don't know of one of the Church of the Living God who does not have problems within their immediate family. So when you get a chance to have fellowship, whether it's online, Mano y mano, take it. Take it. Take them. Like I said, I'm, I'm pretty sure that it makes our Lord happy. So with that said, brethren, um, because of that, like I said, um, <laughs> our, our beloved brother, our dear, dear friend, our dear, dear friend, um, my wife has been looking forward to it. Uh, my wife, uh, is, we're going to have nothing but uh, fellowship within the scriptures. And uh, my wife is going to, 
My wife's a really, really good cook. <laughs> really good cook. Um, going to put some meat on them bones of his, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but um, yeah, we're, uh, we're, we're really looking forward to this time of fellowship with our brother. Um, but with that said, probably not going to be uploading anything for the remainder of this week until next week. Um, probably next Monday-ish or Tuesday-ish. And um, got videos, you know, prepared. Just um, this is a, this is something that cannot be cannot be passed by. This is when you get a chance to actually have true fellowship with one of the Church of the Living God, mano y mano, where they come up by you and you get to lodge them, feed them, have uh, go through the scriptures with them, laugh. Cry, especially right now, brethren. Take him, take it, just take it. Enjoy it, because the time is coming very rapidly, where we might not be able to much longer. And even so, come Lord Jesus. So. Thank you, brethren. We love you. We are praying for so many of you. Thank you for your emails, by the way. Um, those of you of the Church of the Living God, um, thank you. Thank you. Pray for one another, brethren. Pray for one another. Give your time and prayer for one another, brethren. Don't, don't look at it as something merely, oh, it's something I got to do. You're missing it. You're missing that joy of praying for others. So, I'm going to go. We, we, you know, got some things to do here around the house. Um, little knit-knack kind of things. Um, like I said, um, not going to be uploading another video for the remainder of this week until next week. So, you know, okay. Um, thank you all so very much. Thank you to every single one of you. You know who you are. Thank you. And if the Lord will, may he continue. May he continue. But anyway, that's going to be it for this short video. Um, we love you. And we will see you in the next video. Pray for one another, brethren.